This is Nitin Dahad uh, with the Times, and I'm here at the Idea Forge Product Development Center in uh, Navi Mumbai in India, and uh, with Ankit Mehta, who's the C founder and CEO. Ankit, hello. Hi, Nitin. How are you? So, Ankit, um, amazing story you have, and uh, I think you've been going for 17 years, and you started as a project at the, uh, the infamous IIT Mumbai, or Bombay <laughs> as you call it, in 2004. Yes. And uh, yes. you've evolved into a uh, major drone company and you've just IPO'd uh, about a year ago. Uh, yes. Tell us a little bit about the background, uh, just a yeah, quick summary. Yeah, no, so we actually started dabbling with uh, drones when we were still students at IIT Bombay. One of my co founders wanted to make a hovercraft and float it in the lake next to the campus, and yeah. that evolved into making quadcopter drones. 2008, we helped IIT Bombay secure top honors alongside MIT US in a competition that helped. Uh, a lot of labs in India recognizing that there is a team mm. that can build the entire tech stack of drones in India. Right. So they started to ask for our autopilot and of course in 2008 when the attacks in Mumbai happened, yeah. we decided that it was time enough for us to take the technology and the fun we were having with the technology to make a product and then in 2009 we launched our first drone in India. Right. I mean, there's another interesting side story. Uh, your drones were moved in a very famous Bollywood movie as well. Yes, yes. So around the same time, uh, our drone in 2009 was featured in one of the uh, biggest hits of that time, called a movie called Three Idiots. Yeah. And in the song where uh, the drones were being shown as a challenging project, yeah. uh, we were featured and uh, it was our team actually that was operating the drone as well at that time. So did that launch your, 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 your awareness of the product? or uh, oh, Absolutely, it helped us tremendously because whenever after that movie was released, we would go out to any end customer, we would just tell them that, they would typically at that time ask us, what do drones do? Yeah. That was the level of awareness initially, but the moment we'll relate to the movie, everyone would like basically get it, right? So it made our life real easy. So it was around 2009, you, know, you developed uh, some of the electronics, you know, and very basic quadcopter, uh, but then with, with a 8-bit uh, MCU and some sensors, uh, IMUs. Yes. And that sort of evolved into what you have today, is that right? Yes, absolutely. I think it may have started with a, maybe not an 8-bit, but a 816 or a 32-bit okay. uh, microcontroller, and then uh, that tech has now, of course, evolved into maybe a 64-bit controller, and uh, we still make our own autopilot from scratch. We make our uh, own control software. We have the entire design that we do ourselves. Mm -hmm. We have over 72 patents uh, in this space that we've filed globally. Over half of them have already been granted, and they range from the ground control software to the payloads that go in the drone to the battery packs even to the packaging. Okay. So we have a lot of exposure across the entire value chain of the drone ecosystem. Yeah, I, I think uh, you're, in your websites and everything it says you're, you're full stack, uh, uh, yes. so vertically integrated. So that's quite impressive. Tell us a little bit about the, the way you've evolved into applications. I think you're very significantly into defense and the surveillance and, and that's quite a big part of your business. Uh, obviously there's uh, civil and uh, sort of uh, so, um, you know, public uh, governments and that kind of stuff. Just quick summary of that. Yeah, absolutely. I think we typically classify our business in the two domains of defense and civil. Yeah. When you look at the applications uh, across both the domains, actually, you look at applications from four key buckets, right? Mm -hmm. One will be surveillance. The other would be mapping. Third would be inspection and delivery applications. Now, delivery can always almost go to being a loitering munition as well, like in the defense space. Yeah. But across these four buckets, our primary two buckets that we have been servicing traditionally is uh, the surveillance and the mapping buckets. We are very good at both of them. Yeah. And then we are also now building technologies and enabling uh, workflows to allow inspection and a little bit of delivery as well. And some of the platforms that we are building subsequently, both in the current categories that we build for as well as the new categories that we are building, we are introducing delivery as an important use case uh, in those platforms. We are building two large platforms. One will be almost eight to 10 times heavier than our existing heaviest platform. Okay. Uh, so going from about seven kilograms as our heaviest drone today to a 50 kilogram drone. Okay. And going from a 50 kilogram drone to a 500 kilogram drone. So we are essentially uh, changing the uh, orbit by a big margin in these two upcoming new platforms that we are building and they will take our payload carrying capacity from one kg today or one and a half kgs today 
to 10 and 100 kgs plus. Okay, and what are the technology challenges in developing that from the hardware and software? I mean, is it, is it uh, basically uh, a lot of the software stuff, I guess? So, uh, in so far as drone technology is concerned, it's very easy for us, for anybody today, to build a drone. Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of open source technology available. Something is available in the hobby market that can get you to make an autonomous drone quite quickly today. Yeah. What is hard, in our opinion, and it's proving time and again on the field, is one to build very high performance within the same class of systems, and number two is building reliability on that technology stack. Right. And these two aspects are very, very critical. And then when you plug it in with autonomy, these three together mm. end up delivering the best cost of ownership for the customer, which is what anybody who's deploying drones looks for. Yeah. Every time they fly a drone, they need more outcomes every flight. They need more number of flights. Mm. And of course, if we don't need operators who are very skilled in operating those flights, yeah. then you get the lowest cost of ownership. And that's what Idea Forge focuses on relies on. Yeah. In fact, I had mentioned to you earlier, we have an expression in Idea Forge called built like a bird, tested like a tank. Yes, yes, I remember that. Um, and, and, I, and I think um, one of the other things you talked about is you know, the, on, the, on the sort of uh, surveillance and the counter sort of measurements, um, you, you, the reflective radar technologies and stuff like that you're working on as well. Yeah, of course, I think uh, it is very critical insofar as this technology is concerned to look at what's happening in the real world. Mm. and adapting the technology such that it is effective in yeah. the operational environment of our user, right? Yeah. So a lot of effort is going on internally to contextualize the features that our technology will have, our drones will have, yeah. that are going to create a very useful uh, environment for the operator in the field that despite the electronic warfare challenges that drones are facing in the real world in war scenario, mm. the drones are able to be effective and useful for the end user. Okay, and now you've uh, IPO raised $40 million. Uh, what's your uh, sort of vision or strategy uh, what did you raise the money for and where are you heading? Yeah, I think, uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, we have essentially been uh, looking at what do we need to do as a business to be the business we want to be by 2030. And therefore, when we articulated that vision of building new platforms, going to international markets, looking at creating better sources of indigenous technology for our products, and also making sure that we build next generation technology that can capitalize on all the use cases that drones have. We had to raise more capital, mm. and that capital is what we were able to gain from our IPO, along with, of course, uh, giving exit to a lot of our existing investors who had invested earlier. And last question, so you're looking at the international markets, US is one of those, you've set up an entity there. What are the things that you think are your key propositions for that kind of market where you'll be going out and, and pitching? Yeah, I think uh, you know what we've done really well over the years is focus on high performance. Yeah. And that's the biggest differentiator that we have to offer today, along with the autonomy stack that we have on, this, uh, on the drones that we build. Mm. So if you look at our drones, uh, one of our drones, the Netra V4 Pro, flies for more than 90 minutes in the real world. Okay. And we're demonstrating that on ground every day in the US whenever we operate. When you have that level of differentiation where the nearest product would typically fly for not more than 30 minutes right. in the real world, yes. you are essentially offering something extremely unique mm. and it is very effective whenever the user has to look at technologies around uh, that can get them that kind of hover watch capability, overwatch capability that is otherwise not available. Imagine in the time that our drone flies at the last mile where they have to do the overwatch, they have to change the batteries thrice of the other systems that yes, they are operating. Exactly. So right. it changes that perception. And then, because the systems are built for that kind of technology, they essentially give the user the best video output from that range for delivering that capability there. Okay. And that's what differentiates us from anybody else out there. Right. Well, Ankit, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Nitin. Real pleasure thank you. talking to you as well.